Welcome, future psychology students. My name is Jeffrey Pedroza. I'm going to be your professor, I hope, this semester for you. And I wanted to just give you a few tips as we get started for our exciting semester studying psychology. The way the class is set up is I'm going to be coming to you through conference Zoom. So once you get on your Canvas page, tap Conference Zoom, uh, tap the class day, and then join us when the class starts. Keeping in mind that uh, for this semester, I'll be teaching on just Mondays and Tuesdays. Wednesdays and Thursdays will be devoted for you to watch uh, through the week videos on the entire class lecture as well as the video covering the review for the exams. So it's very important that you watch both videos. Uh, in most cases, there's at least two, and I think in one case, for at least one chapter, there's three videos to watch. They're approximately just shy of 15 minutes each, so it doesn't really take a lot of your time. You will have homework to turn in on the second day of class, not the first day of class. That's the live lecture. Second day of class, you'll be turning in two pages of notes. One page will be from your textbook readings for the chapter that's due that week. And the other page will be notes from your video watching. We have one short paper. It's called a relate paper. I have a video on how to construct that. And we have an autobiography due. Besides that, we have four exams. The cool thing about the exams is I give you the reviews before the exams. I tell you exactly what the short answer essays are going to be on. So there's no surprises. In each exam, we have 10 short answer essays. The exams are worth 50 points, so each question is worth 5 points. Hint, thoroughness. Um, Having a complete answer for the question is what usually gets you full credit. Don't assume that I know the answer, which I do. Just tell it to me as if I don't know the answer. That should be your best approach to answering the questions on the exam. We're going to cov uh, cover, depending on the class, between 15 and 16 chapters. So that's a lot of notes you'll be taking from the textbook as well as the uh, video. Again, do the second class day, which is either a Wednesday or a Thursday. Now, when it's due depends on the class. So you need to check on Canvas to look at the actual due date. It's sometimes it's 11.59 p.m., sometimes it's 7.05, or sometimes it's the start of the class period. Whatever you, the deadline is, always do it before the class starts. That way, no doubt in your mind, you've got it in, and the Wi-Fi didn't go out just as you're entering, just as the class or the deadline is about to expire. Right. So better early than late. Um, for the actual live classes, which will occur either on Monday or Tuesday, depending on the class, we'll start at the, at the beginning of class time. Uh, I'm going to ask you to turn on your video feed. I want to see my students. I want to be able to see you raise your hand if you have a question. Now I'm going to ask you to place all your computers, your uh, contraptions on mute and only turn them on when you have a question and when I call on you, right? We have about approximately 40 students per class and all the classes are full, so I'm excited to get started. And I can't wait to see and meet all of you, right? So I'm looking forward to an adventure with you, teaching remotely and um, Either the videos were, are already posted and you can see them in the assignments so you to watch, or I will be creating them throughout the semester and I will post them under assignments or 
post them in the form of announcements. Speaking of announcements, make sure you pay attention to any announcements and deadlines that come your way. Because things can change, as you well know, rather dramatically, and I want you to feel like you're up on top of things. Even though it's difficult, because I know many of you have more than one course, you have other obligations. These are interesting times, to say the least. But I'm looking forward to making this a tr smooth transition, having you acquire a lot of knowledge, having you share your experiences in live lecture, and making this a wonderful experience. A little bit about me. I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, actually within the city limits, not in, from one of the suburbs. From an early age, I thought my future would be working in the automobile industry. That's what a lot of young fellas in the city of Detroit were dreaming about, working in the auto industry. And sure enough, my dream came true like my father before me. I started working at a factory, putting together automobile parts, and my foreman came up to me and said, I have good news and bad news. And I said, what's the good news? He says, you've been here over 90 days and we're giving you a raise. I said, yes. What's the bad news? Uh, we're laying you off. Well, you know, when that expression, when one door closes, you break a window. All right. I'm never re really good with expressions, but um, that forced me to do something else. Uh, by losing my job, it forced me to get another position. And sure enough, I went into a substance abuse clinic, not as a patient, but as an employee working with kids in prevention of substance abuse. And that eventually led to a substance abuse therapist position. That eventually uh, led me to thinking, maybe I should go back to school. High school diploma is a little limiting. So I wound up going to school. And then my dreams were to get a master's degree in clinical psychology. I had three goals once I graduated. One, teach. Two, practice, do therapy. Three, own my own consulting firm. Within two years of graduating with my master's from Eastern Michigan University, from Ypsilanti, Michigan, I was doing all three things. And then suddenly, after a few years of doing my dream, I quit my full-time teaching job, I shut down my consulting business, I uh, quit private practice, I packed all my goods into a moving van, towed the car, and drove from Lansing, Michigan to Hawthorne, California, coming from Michigan to California without a job. No prospects. What would possess a person to do that? Well, some of you are saying a woman. You're right. Haven't you done something that your heart told you was a good idea? And afterwards you said, what the pho just happened? Now, when I say pho, I'm referring to that bowl of Vietnamese soup, which I just consumed today for dinner. What the pho? Well, eventually I found a job. It wasn't in teaching. I really thought they will hire me immediately. I'm such an amazing professor. Didn't happen for a couple of years, about two and a half years. Unfortunately, I got teaching gigs, and you can read my short biography to find out where I taught. But eventually, Santa Ana College gave me an opportunity to teach part time, and I, they had a position opening in the fall of 2001. 100 other people applied for my position. I was fortunate to get it. And so I never forget that 100 other people want my position. So I try to do the very best every semester. Now, in the fall of 2020, this marks a milestone for me. I will have been teaching for 30 years. And you know what? It still feels fresh to me. I'm still super excited. Now, an aside about my life, I am Spider-Man. Now, you may just laugh and say, sure you are. Let me tell you the story of how I realized I was Spider-Man. And guess what? I'm not getting as much criticism about that statement since the Spider-Verse movie came out. 
When I was a kid growing up in Detroit, my father would take us to the Mexican barber. Now we called him the Mexican barber because he was a barber and he was Mexican. While waiting for the, the older kids to get their haircuts, we would sit around and read the comic books. Now these comic books didn't have any covers on them, but you know, there were Superman and Batman and Fantastic Four and Spider-Man. I couldn't even read, but you know, with comic books, you can kind of look at the pictures, they're colorful, and there's a lot of action, and you can kind of figure out what's going on. As I got older, I started reading the stories and I realized, and I don't know if this has ever happened to you, I realized they were telling the story of my life. I don't know if you've ever had that happen. You hear lyrics of a song, you see a clip in a movie, you read a passage in a book, you say, that's me. It was the story of my life. Now, to reiterate, reiterate Peter Parker, smart kid, gets bit by a radioactive spider, becomes Spider-Man, doesn't really want to be a superhero at first, wants to impress a girl, but because he fails to stop a criminal, that criminal eventually kills his father figure, and now he's played with guilt and responsibility. And of course, you know the line. I'll start it, you finish it. With great power comes great responsibility. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's a story of my life. It's a story of a lot of our lives. A lot of our parents sacrifice so we can have this opportunity for higher education. Let's be honest, most of our mothers were Wonder Woman. They may not have had the costume, but they did some amazing things. Some of our fathers were Iron Man or Batman. Maybe they didn't have the cash, but they sacrificed a lot so we can have this opportunity to engage in higher education. When I'm not teaching, I'm living. I used to go to a lot of flea markets and antique shops, but my life is a lot more simple these days. I used to go to a lot of movie theaters and museums, but now a lot of my focus is my family, my environment, my health, and you. So a little bit about myself. I'm looking forward to meeting you. I'm looking forward to reading your autobiographies, which you'll be turning in soon. And ask a lot of questions. I love questions. By the way, see this ink pen right here? This is ink pen number 664. In the psychology lab, I have several containers filled with 600 plus empty ink pens. Now, why are they empty? Because I spent a lot of ink pens grading your assignments, your papers, your exams. Now, a lot of it's done on the computer now, but I still use my ink pen. So feel free to see throughout the semester when this ink pen dies, I'll be replacing it with another ink pen. That's one of the things I collect there, empty ink pens. So on to an amazing semester. Good luck to all of you. Stay happy and stay healthy. See you soon. So if you hear people call me Spidey, now you know why. Take care.